everybody, it's Robert Kennedy the third RK3, and today I had the opportunity to talk with one of the most powerful people that I've met in a little while, a 14-year-old, Gabrielle Jordan. It was a ridiculous interview. I had an amazing time, and I want to share that with you guys. One of the things that was particularly poignant for me, one of the things that I loved was about 25 minutes, and I asked her a question about purpose and I want you to pay special attention to that because whether you're a kid, whether you're a teen, a, a grown-up adult, whatever age you are, that answer on purpose is something that you really want to pay attention to. It inspired me listening to it. So that's it. Success sessions coming right up. Listen to the podcast. See you soon. Purpose, power, profit. It's time for another three-piece success session with your host, Robert Kennedy III, RK3. Are you ready? It's time. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me for another success session. I'm Robert Kennedy III, RK3, and today we are rocking and rolling. I love my guests because we've had, I met them at a networking event last year and we've been trying to pull this together for almost that amount of time. And what I loved about them was number one, they were a team. Number two, they were unique. Number three, they were young, they were fresh, they were hip, they were hot. And I, I just loved the energy, especially um, uh, of Gabrielle, and, and you will meet them in a second, and you'll see why I love the energy. I'm I'm a little bit grown. I got a couple of things on my ch on my chin here that tell you that I'm grown, um, and so th th that was the, the the major thing that that caught my attention. Gabrielle is young, and we'll share her age in just a few minutes. If she's if she's not shy about sharing her age yet, right? I know, I know that happens when you get older. But anyway, um, so listen, what we do on the success sessions, we share stories. Number one, we talk about life. We talk about business. We talk about purpose, power, and profit, and how you achieve those things. How you really find your purpose. How you live with power, and how you can create more profit through all of that. So, without further ado, I'm talking a whole lot. I'm gonna get rid of my gab and say. What's up, Gabrielle, Marcella? How are both of you? Doing well. <laughs> morning, Robert. <laughs> good, good. Listen, what have, what have you guys been up to? I want to say I've been following you on uh, Facebook especially, and Gabrielle is a rock star doing BT 106 in Park and quite a few of those things. How, 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 how's life been going? How have you been managing all of that? Very busy, and you know, just a lot of stuff going on. But it's it's good. It's good busy. <laughs> good, 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 good. What what else are you doing right now, or what else do you have coming up? I saw the stuff about uh, the seed beads and whatever at the Smithsonian uh, recently. What what else do you have going on? Mommy usually knows my calendar more than <laughs> I do. <so. laughs> Speaking engagement. Yeah. Just, just, charity stuff. Yeah, just stuff going on like. Uh, just events and, you know, speaking and selling and uh, philanthropy, things like that. I just, you know, continuing with my business. And I also have, you know, my, my web show that I do every Sunday. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we, I, I spoke about you being young a few moments ago. Do you mind sharing with us how old you are exactly? I'm 14. Okay. So you're 14 and you're talking about philanthropy and some, <laughs> some big words already that are pretty much not in the vocabulary of most of the 14 year olds that I know. Tell me a little bit about, gosh, how did all of this even come about? How did you know that you wanted to do this at such a young age? Um, I guess entrepreneurship is really um, run through my family. I'm on my mom's side, I'm sixth generation entrepreneur. Wow. And so, you know, entrepreneurship has always really run through my blood. I knew, but I knew ever since I was younger than I am now that I never really wanted to work for anybody mm -hmm. uh, unless I absolutely had to. So it was, so it was really an, an like a meant to happen for me to become an entrepreneur. It was, it was already in my blood. I just had to find out what it was that I wanted to do, and uh, I always loved jewelry. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, when I was seven, I self-taught myself how to make jewelry by going on to YouTube, and I would look at magazines, and I would just teach myself how to make jewelry. Now, I don't know where I got 
uh, my love for jewelry from, uh, per se, but I just know that I've always loved it. And so I decided to kind of do a jewelry business or, or to, yeah, do a jewelry business mostly because when I started wearing my jewelry to school, uh, people would actually buy the pieces right off of me. And so I just thought that maybe I could do something with this and maybe I could you know, try something with it, and I like I never even expected to write a book or you know start speaking or anything like that. Even get the jewelry business as far as it, as it is right now, but it's gotten to that point, and it's just you know it's exciting. Wow! So, uh, you guys obviously you and your mom are wearing jewelry right now. Is is any of that your stuff? Yeah, oh, yeah. everything is. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Amazing. So, how how long would you say it took you to make those? Do you make them personally, do you, or do you kind of just design them and send them out to a manufacturer? I make them. I design and I make them. Um, and the they probably um, they probably mm -hmm. take maybe around less than an hour for some, maybe a few hours for another. I mean, the longest I've taken to make a piece was probably maybe a day, um, but not like not just making the piece all in one day, but making it throughout the day. So, yeah, yeah I've learned how to make it pretty quickly. So let me ask you this question, and, and I let me see if I can phrase this right. What makes your jewelry special? Mm -hmm. Okay, what makes your jewelry special? So, I mean, there are other people that make jewelry, but they don't have the the name that you do just yet mm -hmm. or maybe yeah. not at all some people just kind of make it in their house and they kind of may share it with their family members what makes yours special so my jewelry company i call it it's a brand the jewelry is a brand it's a elegant classy uh, but modern jewelry style and it has the brand jewels of jordan on all the pieces and what my mom likes to call it it's the, from the boardroom to the ballroom. So um, a lot of people, you know, when they make jewelry, they focus on making sure the style is different from other people. But with my jewelry, I'm going more in the direction of the branding of my of my jewelry. You know, like, you know how Coco Chanel has the brand of the purses, even though there are other purses that look similar. But my, my stuff is about the brand that I'm growing, the brand of Jewels of Jordan. So that is, um, that you're talking about, something that most business owners struggle with. You're talking about marketing. You're talking yeah. about um, just creating a, a visibility and a positioning for something. How did you know so early on that that's kind of the, the model that you wanted to create for your business? No, I mean, before, I, when I started my business, I didn't, uh, I didn't really have an idea whether or not I wanted it to be like something unique or something branded or anything like that but uh, because I didn't really know of course I didn't know a lot about business or anything like that but my mom she would tell me a few different like ideas about what I could do with my business and how I could grow it and when I first started making it I was trying to go for something more unique and more different but when it comes to making jewelry that's unique and different you know there are a lot of different styles of jewelry, and you'll find a lot of the th of things that are very similar in style. So that's when we decided to go into the direction of branding, because um, with branding, one, if you you get your name out, get more, you can get exposed with that name, and then people will know your name and know your brand, and you can raise prices and all different things like that. And also, I think that. Being, having a brand in, instead of having a unique design or a unique style, um, I think it just brings more of a, what's the word? Um, kind of, like, I feel like when I make my jewelry as a brand, it's kind of like closer to home for me or it's uh, more personal to make my jewelry in that way instead of just trying, like, thinking of something that's unique. Instead, I'm just, you know, thinking what's in my heart, what's my, what's my designs. You don't want to overlook your quality either. Right. Yeah. I mean, you do use really quality stones. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is a, a, a very mature process or, or way of looking at it. And as I said before, not many business owners get to that point, even people that have been in business for years. So mm -hmm. now, let, so let, let me switch gears a little bit and, and, and get mom into this a bit. Uh, so, so mom, you are mom, you are manager, you are 
And because I, I think that when we spoke, you mentioned that Gabrielle, because of everything that she does, uh, is, is homeschooled, right? So Correct. your mom, manager, teacher, and you own your own business as well. How do you juggle all of that stuff? With with the four letter word help. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, and I and I take that seriously. As far as uh, I think, a lot of people have a tro have problems asking for help, and I use it in terms of uh, accountability. We all need accountability, and before I make a decision to do anything to go in a certain direction, I make sure first I have the accountability and the help that I need to follow it, follow through with it. So I have to be very strategic with the decision. So in order to make sure things are balanced, so for instance, when we decided to homeschool her, I had a conversation with certain family members to say, okay, if I have to be here or there, can you step in? Okay, yeah, so things were in place. Um, same thing with my business, I have partners. So I have to make sure things are in place. So if I can't be there, um, there's someone that can cover. So I'm, you know, doing it all, I'm not doing it all, but um, I'm able to do what I do because of the team, because of the support that I have. Right. Awesome. So now, uh, as Gabrielle mentioned, she is a sixth generation entrepreneur, which means that you're, you're the fifth. So um, <laughs> you know probably firsthand some of the struggles of an entrepreneur, and yet you thought it was okay to allow your daughter to go down this path. Of course, with, with your help. What what was it that allowed you to know that she was um, mature enough or ready for the entrepreneur journey? Yeah, I think it was, you know, it's very important to know your children, first of all, as a parent. You have to know where your child is and not force your will onto them. So I had to pay close attention to her personality and to see where her mindset was. And I realized she, she was, I always say, she's an old soul. So <laughs> she had a she has a maturity level at a young age that many adults don't have, and she was able and I see the way she, her outlook is on life. So I realized uh, that okay, she can handle this. We'll just you know take the baby, take the necessary steps it takes to grow a business organically. She can handle. She'll be able to handle rejection. She'll be able to handle um, frustration, failure, and handle success as well. So we just took those steps with her, but first realizing that, okay, can she handle these things? How will she be able to take, you know, take it all in? And so knowing that. And really, like, a, a part of that, too, is, like, um, when I started wearing my jewelry to school, uh, it was, I didn't, it's not like mommy and daddy asked me uh, or t told me, maybe you should try wearing your jewelry to school. That was my initial reaction. Um, even when, even make, learning how to make jewelry, that was for me. I didn't. No one had to tell me to learn how to make jewelry. I did that myself. And even you know when I f sold my first piece, nobody had to tell me to um, try to sell it somewhere else or try and sell it again. I, it was just my initial reaction to go ahead and try and you know wear it to school. Once I sold one piece, try and sell another mm -hmm. piece, things like that. And so I guess they they picked that up and they read yes. that from me that you know I already have that business mindset or that entrepreneurial mindset set um, already in my head and I was you know I could try and you know jump into it even if it may if it, even if it doesn't work out I also learned from them that you know they tell me a lot that you know everything you can learn from everything you can learn you can grow from everything so even if my business didn't work out this would have been a learning experience for me and for them and so uh, I guess those are all the factors that I believe yeah, what she said. From. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, so you just talked about your your first piece. Now, mm -hmm. I just had a, a call with one of my coaching groups yesterday, and we were talking about selling, and we were talking about um, some of the reasons that people buy from you. And so, we mentioned the people buy from you because you solve uh, a problem that they have. They have a need. And you 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 provide a solution for you for it. Um, they may buy from you simply because they like you and they want to support you. And they may also buy from you because they know somebody else that has a need and that you can help that person. And so they buy for that person. So in your case, um, who was who was your first buyer? Was it a family member? Was it did you actually go to school and sell to a friend or you know how did that come about? 
My first piece, first of all, it was called the Bling Bling Ring. Wow. And, um, <laughs> 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 and you know that, especially with kids, kids are a tough market to sell to. Well, first um, of all, they don't have any money. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, too, yeah. But, um, yeah, so you definitely have to, if you want to sell something, you definitely have to work at it, but especially to kids. But uh, for what I had... When I, when I went to school, one of my friends, she saw the, the, the ring that I had, and she wanted it, and so she, she said that she loved it, and she just bought it. Now, I didn't even try and sell it, so I, what I think is, I think jewelry is a, the selling tactic of something that someone, like solving a problem, like if they needed a ring to go with an outfit that they were going to wear, then that's why, they're going, that's why they're buying this. If they needed a necklace to to work 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 with an outfit that or uh, a dress that they're gonna get these are all different th factors so I think that jewelry is the selling tactic of um you know what is it that's helping or provi providing a, uh, yeah. a help or a service or anything like that and um so once I sold the bling bling ring that first time uh, I decided that I wanted to you know try something else maybe wear another piece to school, see what happens next time. And so next time I made a pink and black charm bracelet. And I wore that to school, and the same girl bought that bracelet from me again. And uh, just from those, like, just from those two experiences, from, you know, selling two pieces to the same girl, like, with less than a week apart, was uh, just really surprising to me and a really great learning uh, experience for me because then I realized that uh, that if I could get a buyer to, or someone to buy twice the same customer then I should probably do something with this or with this duo or maybe try and expand it or you know sell somewhere else and so I that's where I kind of got and jumped into the whole jewelry business thing. Wow. Well, listen, so we're talking about school. And um, as I think, as I mentioned, most kids your age are in school. So, uh, so there are things maybe socially that they do that you're not doing at this point. How, how do you respond when people bring up the fact that, that, that you, that you may be missing out or that you're not in school? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, when people say that, uh, like, if they say that they're missing out, or like, because I know a lot of adults, they tell me um, that homeschooling is really good, but they also are, I always also are saying, you know, make sure you have fun and make sure, you know, you know, you shouldn't really be having a business at, the, at this age. You have all adult years to do all this. And, you know, when I hear that, I just, uh, I just, I, I don't really focus on it or, really care about it. I don't want to say ignore it because that's kind of rude, but <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say um, I, I know that they think that I might be missing out on, you know, fun activities or something like that, but my business is fun for me. Making jewelry and designing new things and, uh, you know, just doing everything that I'm doing, especially getting, you know, being on TV. <laughs> These are fun things for me, and this is extracurricular activity. This is uh, something and besides it'll help me to get into colleges it'll help me to do many other things so this business um, it may you know I may not be able to do other fun stuff for school but you know I still I get to text my friends I get to see my friends and you know it's just I guess it's just like it doesn't really I guess well I, I can't I'm trying to find the word exactly but I guess that people just are really uh, sensitive to kids, you know, working like having a business because they want to make sure that they're that we're having fun and that we're not growing up too fast. So I understand their point of view, but I just know that they don't know what it's like in my shoes right now. And I know that what I'm doing is fun for me. I enjoy it, and I wouldn't really, I I don't regret getting out of school for this because I love this, and I'll be able to do so many more things. You know, once I'm older, I can only imagine it'll be like 21 or 30. <laughs> Right. I mean, I think the other thing that I see there as well that maybe people don't recognize is that it's not like you've quit school and you're just randomly roaming the streets and trying to raise a business on your own. You've got guidance. You've got a family that supports you. You've got parents that not just support what you're doing, but are doing it themselves and also know what it, it is like to run a business that, that they've grown up in entrepreneurial families. And so you know they've known their entire lives 
what the process is, is like. So they can offer quite a bit more guidance than maybe the average per, per, person or parent that, that mm -hmm. hasn't done. People always think, you know, I should be a normal kid, but I don't really know what is a normal kid. Like, you know, just going to school, hanging out at a friend's house and then watching right. TV or something like that. That's not, that's not where I want to be. That's not where, if I were to have like a reverse universe of instead of not having a business being a normal kid, I would definitely hate that. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, listen, let, let, let me go back to, uh, Marcella, for a moment. So you, we, we just talked about the guidance that you offer to Gabrielle. Um, if you were to offer that guidance or offer advice to other young entrepreneurs, I, I, uh, one of the people that, we, that we're both mutually connected to, and I see a lot, is uh, Danette, Lynette's daughter. Um, so based on that experience, knowing another young entrepreneur in that way, if you had to offer advice to young entrepreneurs, what's the most important thing that you think that they should know? I would say the most important thing that young entrepreneurs should know, should keep in mind going into a business, is that it's, your, it's their responsibility. And, and you even having conversations with uh, Lynette, you know, you know, we can say the same thing that they have to realize that while we're here to support you and help you, this is not our business. It belongs to that to them, and they have to own it. They have to make the final decisions. They have to make the mistakes. They have to go through it, and uh, again, have the help but own the responsibility of being that business owner and, and other par and parents of young entrepreneurs, because you can say that to the kids, but going through it myself, I, I have to tell myself this all the time because we naturally want to take control of things. And even especially for her starting at such a young age and going into teen years now, it's a transition and you have to do a little more in the beginning. And for a parent, it's hard to sometimes to let go as those stages develop. And I mean, even that's even in business. Period. I, I think raising a child is, has required some of the same skills, a lot of the same skills as being an entrepreneur. So all of that, it is so important for young people to understand. To that's your, it's your response. It's your business. Take ownership of it all. But as parents, we have to understand it's their it's their business to let them take ownership of it. That's right. Good. Okay. So. Um... Tell me, I know that, that right now you're at a specific place in your business, Gabrielle, but what do you see as, as the future here for you? What, what are the big goals that you have for yourself? So for my different, you know, because I have like the different parts of my business, I have my jewelry, my speaking, and my book. And so I, I have big goals for all three of those things. For, for my jewelry, I want to do... Uh, kind of designing more of my jewelry and then uh, giving to, like having manufacturing so kind of shifting from making it at home to manufacturing because I want to get my jewelry into you know high end boutiques and different stores and so I will want to continue to design my jewelry and make my my own designs but I definitely would want to kind of shift into the manufacturing way of doing things and also I've all I've all I've also always wanted to become a gemologist and so one of my big big goals when I get older um, I want to be I want to go to the gemological institution of America to become GIA certified and um, you know become a gemologist so that's one of my biggest one of my bigger goals for jewelry um, for my book and future books I really want to become an international best-selling author New York Times best-selling author for my next book or and I also really want to write a few more books, you know, whatever comes to me. But I, I, I like the process of writing my first book, even though it was a little, you know, you had a lot of had a lot of focus and a lot of sacrifice. But it was just a, a really great process to write a book, and I kind of want to do that for more books that I write. And for my speaking, I want to become a world-renowned speaker, international speaker. And I've always really wanted to go to... Uh, India and Africa and speak to girls there because I know that that's a place that a lot of people you know 
can focus on or that I would really want to focus on because the girls there, I just feel that they should know that they can do these different things even though they're in these harsh environments. I just want to be able to feed some knowledge into them because they may not get the, get this knowledge enough. So these are just some of my big goals that I really want to do. And you know that and the whole thing about speaking in Africa and um, in India, that's also kind of part of my philanthropy kind of ideas too. <laughs> Different things like that. But I just have a lot of goals in my mind. And I've always I have always dreamed big ever since I started my business. So, you know, I just continue to dream big and you know, my brother told me this the, the the quote, you know, shoot for the moon and if you miss you'll be among the stars. So I just always keep that in mind whenever I'm thinking of something or wanting to have a a, a dream or goal that I want to set. Awesome. So I'm gonna ask you for a little bit of advice here. So one mm -hmm. of the things that I deal with, especially in, in, in my coaching groups, is uh, people that are in transition, people that are maybe moving from corporate into entrepreneurship, people that are not really clear about what they should do. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we do is we really go back to purpose. We go back to uh, the, the starting point based on the belief that each of us has been gifted with specific talents and specific skills and, and areas of influence. And, and when we maximize those, that is how we um, fulfill our place in the world. That's how we contribute and that's how we make the most impact and show up as the best. So if you met somebody who was unclear on their purpose, so you seem to be pretty clear on some of the goals that you've got here. If you met somebody that was unclear on their purpose or what they wanted to achieve in life, what advice would you give them? So I would really say that you shouldn't really rush having, you know, finding your purpose. Uh, I know that being a kid, it is definitely a lot easier to start a business and have goals because you don't have a lot of the burdens that you do as an adult. Um, but even being an adult, uh, even for adults, I just believe that a lot of adults, even, you know, some people that I've met, they tend to want to, you know, rush into everything and rush into getting the, the reaching their goals, rush into reaching the dreams because they feel like, you know, they need to do those things. And I really think that having finding your purpose, it should really it should come naturally. Um, I started my business not because my parents told me to start a jewelry business or told me to start learning how to make jewelry, but because I naturally was drawn to jewelry making. I was naturally drawn to being a business owner. And I just really feel that if you don't know your purpose right now, try different things, you know, you know, but just don't put so much energy. Don't, don't try too hard to, you know, find that thing because you're, what you're going to end up doing is finding something and you think you like it, you think it's your purpose, and then a few months later you realize, oh, I rushed into this and this is not really what I love, and then you're going to start this process all over again of trying to find something new. So I just really think that you should let this, your purpose, let these dreams and your goals really come naturally to what you want to do because that's really what it's about. It's not being forced into what, not being forced into your purpose. It's being drawn to your purpose. Awesome, awesome. So we're we're wrapping up here, and I'm going to ask you a question, Marcella. I hope it's not insulting to you, but how mm -hmm. how useful do you feel having somebody that is so mature and so ridiculously autonomous <laughs> and self-supporting in your own house? I mean, what left is there for you to do? <laughs> Oh, no, I, I love it. Trust me, there's always something to do. <laughs> she keeps me busy just because she's so active. <laughs> but I, I love it. I mean, what else, could a, what, a, what else could a parent ask for? Well, at least she just needs somebody to drive her places right now, right? <laughs> I am the chauffeur, really. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. So, listen, we, we are wrapping up here. And let me ask you guys, is there anything that you just, from your heart, want to share with uh with with everybody okay yeah i'll let you close out um just uh for me again being a mother trying to bounce it up as a business owner and with my daughter i think uh, the biggest thing the biggest lesson i've learned is to allow myself to um, use the same process through it all 
Um, learn from every every step. Learn from what people may present to you, but uh, stay in the state of always learning. Okay, so I need to always learn, always develop. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. There's so much I could say, but um, when it comes to balancing all three and working with her, working with a the business, there are so much similarities within the personal life business um, and, and this realm. So allow the process, the system that you use for one to work for the others. Um, I would just say that when you are trying to find what you're trying to do. This is specifically actually really to uh, young kids that are trying to figure out what they really want to do, and even to adults maybe. Um, when I speak, a lot of pe uh, the teachers or the people that, the adults that are there, they they always are telling the kids that, you know, when I speak that you, you should be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur, and they think that that's what I, they want. They think that that's what I want them to say to the kids. But really, I don't think that you have to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is something that you can choose. But what I do believe in is having the entrepreneurial mindset. Because the, having that mindset of an entrepreneur can be applied to everything. To personal life, to a job, to, to raising a child, as my mom said. It's a, you know, that mindset, it takes confidence, strength, uh, you know, just uh, resilience, you know, pushing forward, all those different things, and that's something that everybody needs to have. So you don't have to be an entrepreneur just because, you know, it's something that you may, you may think that would be great to do. You don't really have to be an entrepreneur, but just have that mindset of an entrepreneur. Excellent. I love it. Thank you guys so much for spending the time. I mean, I think this has probably been, not that I don't enjoy my other interviews, but this one has been really <laughs> special to me for several reasons. Number one, the, the entrepreneurial mindset, as you mentioned, something that I love. I've got three kids. I've got a daughter. And uh, a couple of years ago, one of my sons, we were, he was about four at the time or five and we were driving and he just started talking about this vision of this restaurant that he wants to own when he's mm -hmm. older. And I just whipped out my phone and kind of held it backwards and started <laughs> recording him as he was just talking about this vision. And I've got it. So I don't know what he's going to do later on, but I've got that thing for posterity and I'll share it with him saying, hey, remember you used to dream when you were six? <laughs> so so, I, so that, uh, that comes to my mind and, and all of that comes into my spirit when, when I hear what you say, Gabrielle. So thank you both for spending some time with me this morning. It's been amazing. It's been inspirational. It's been awesome. And I thank you so much for being generous with your time today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. All right, everybody else, this has been another success session. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember to be bold, be exceptional, and remember that each moment is just another opportunity for you to create something new. This is Robert Kennedy, RK3. Have a good day.